over the country are saying this global pledge every morning when, when they come into school. And so we're going to be taking a look at where it came from and how it was created. And first of all, I'd like to welcome you, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks for coming over here. Anytime. I know it was a Appreciate busy day. Appreciate you inviting me. Yeah. So um, do we have a picture of the Global Pledge that we could take a look at um, up on the screen? The, what the Pledge says is, I pledge my allegiance to the planet Earth to make it a better, healthier, and safer world for all people, for all. So that was your creation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so in the spring of 89, you were attending uh, Kipcock Kipcock Community College. Community College yeah. And you had an assignment in your English 101 class Correct. to write a letter to the editor. Of the so college paper. At, mm -hmm. at the college paper. Mm -hmm. But you did write a letter that could conceivably could change the earth, could change a lot well, of things. Well, we hope so. Yeah. So tell us about your, your letter that you wrote and how you got this idea. Well, basically it was inspired by uh, what George Bush had said during the 1988 presidential campaign. One of his campaign promises was if he were elected president, he'd like to make the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag mandatory in our educational system. And not only did I not think it was a good idea at the time, oh. I, I thought that it would be taking you know democracy in the wrong direction because there were clear examples all over the world, in, in Russia, in China, in Germany, that governments could not legislate democracy or, or patriotism. And so I suggested to him that that, first of all, would be a, a large step backwards to all of a sudden put, say, you must say this pledge, especially mm -hmm. with all the things going on. And I suggested to him a better way might be to um, inspire the children by giving them something they could share with the world. And in this case, it was a new pledge, a global pledge so the kids in America could say it, and the kids in China could say it, and the kids in Russia could say it. And out of that, you know, create a whole new world. And that was the basic concept of the Global Pledge. Oh, isn't that yeah. wonderful? Thank what you. a great idea it was. So, um, I mean, I'm going to read your basic premise here, sure. which, which you <laughs> said in the editorial, because I thought it was just so wonderful. Wouldn't it be nice if one day all the children of the world would wake up and instead of being led, in a pledge to their own little plot of earth or their collar that they chose to make a pledge to the planet earth. A pledge that stressed global responsibility, a common pledge free from political or religious views that the American children could choose to say with pride and of course the Soviet children and the Chinese children and all, all the other children of the world mm -hmm. and so out of that dream came your pledge mm -hmm. and um, we, we just think it's wonderful well, thank you. you know and Catherine supports it yes it's just wonderful it's just I do well. some work with children myself mm -hmm. and um, I think it's so important that children have a global awareness, like you said, and just, instead of just focusing on their, uh, you know, America and each individual little country. Now, so your idea is, is to have that global pledge replace the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Well, certainly the make it optional. First of all, it would be a choice of the children. Mm. The advantage to the thing is, you can imagine, because of the 24 time zones around the world, mm. imagine every child waking up in the morning and saying this pledge. 24 hours a day, somewhere around the world, somebody would be saying this pledge. Mm. So and, you know, the ongoing. Whole thing, ongoing, around the, the, the day. Time. Talk you about know. the power of one. Sure. I mean, the power that one child, yeah. one child, one child, one child, exactly. all those one little children can have to affect change. And, and to start at such a young age, mm -hmm. to, to have that ingrained with them, that they're thinking of global peace. Mm -hmm. Thinking peace and thinking global, global. awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's where it has to start as the children. Yes. I really think that's what we need to emphasize. Now, do you have, uh, have you worked with children before? Is that where? Not really. Not no? until I went out and started invited, you know, to the different schools and got to talk to maybe thousands of kids. Mm. And a, a tremendous input from them. I mean, it was so much enthusiasm and, and so much great thoughts that, that uh, I was just so inspired that I just wanted to, to make everybody at least involved in this that they wanted to be. I bet now. Yeah. So have you been invited all over the country? Or Not as of yet. That'd be no? nice. All over oh, the world would be nice. But right now it's been be. localized. Yeah. And then I've received letters from all over the world and from different places. And uh, it's been nice. Yeah. So tell us about when you first were invited into the classroom. You actually, you, you got lucky because you had a teacher that saw your editorial Correct. and took it in and, and read it to her class, mm -hmm. actually two teachers. 
And then when you went in there, I think you found that the children received it more and gave you more support in what you were Tremendously. In fact, like I said, when I wrote the thing, it was an open letter to the president saying, mm. you know, this is what I think would be great. And they said, well, did you send it to the president? Did you send it to the governor? And at the time, I hadn't. And so the first thing they did is inspire me to send it to the president <laughs> and send it to the governor. And then I sent it to Gorbachev and I sent it to, you know, all over the place. Mm. Again, from their inspiration saying, you know, you said this great thing, but when are you going to do something about it? Great. And so that was great, you know, and I, I got a lot of encouragement from them to do things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They also wanted you to include the mineral kingdom and the plant kingdom. Well, that, that was one of the things. And when the pledge originally came out, it said, for all mankind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was contacted by several groups, but one was the children had said to me, well, how about the animals? And, uh, and so we left the man out, and that's why it's for all instead of all mankind now. Yeah. Wonderful. See, they don't miss a trick. Do Not they? a thing. They That's really amazing. Don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. So you sent copies to the president, the president. and to the governor, mm -hmm. and really all over the world, a lot of mm -hmm. celebrities. A lot of um, celebrities, uh, a lot of national newspapers. National newspapers. Uh, magazines, CNN, in, ABC, UN? NBC, UN, yep. Yeah. Children's Conference for Peace they had a couple years ago. And Good grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been going quite a few places. So it has gone pretty far. Yep. Um, I'm thinking especially of the, when you, you sent a copy to Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. or you sent several copies to, to him. Michael, I want to make sure Michael got it, because yeah. I thought he could, you know, again, inspire children to make this change exactly. much better than maybe I could, so sure. I thought that was important. And then later on, this song came out about the Man in the Mirror. Well, Man in the Mirror came out first, which was or, part of the inspiration oh, yeah, for first. writing the song, that we should look at ourselves if we want to make a change before we try to go out and change everything. But then shortly, or within a year after I had sent him this stuff, he came out with the, the song Heal the World, which if you listen to it, has a, a lot of similarities to the pledge, which is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that's all going along with the Hundredth Monkey story? Which well, the Hundredth Monkey is something I believe in very strongly, yes. Can you share that a little bit with our audience about... Well, quickly, if you happened? don't know the Hundredth Monkey story, I don't know if we can do it uh, real quickly. Probably a lot of people don't know it. Well, it back, started in Japan, I know Well, that, actually, yeah, back during the 50s, some scientists were doing experiments giving uh, monkeys sweet potatoes. And they were dropping out of airplanes, and they were landing on the beach, and the monkeys were mm -hmm. eating them, but they didn't like the sand that was all over them. And one day, a young monkey realized that she could wash the sweet potato when the sand was gone and everything was wonderful. Well, she taught it to her mother, and she taught it to her friends. And uh, people who listened to the, the young monkey <laughs> finally caught on to the thing. Make a long story short, eventually,